Hi friends, welcome to Azure Content. This is part 19 in Azure Data Factory Real-Time Scenarios playlist. In this video, we are going to learn how to reverse an array using ADF pipelines. So let's see the requirement in details. So we have few input arrays as you can see on screen. So the first array is having all the string elements as you can see its elements are A, B, C, D. Okay. And in the output we are expecting it to be reversed and the array should be D, C, B and A. Okay. Similarly in second example we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and we are expecting the output to be coming as 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. So let's see how to achieve this using ADF pipeline. Okay. So let me go to ADF portal and here let me start creating a pipeline and let me create a pipeline parameter for this input array first. Okay. So let me name it as input array and let me give the type as array type. Okay. So let me select array from the drop down and here in the default value let me give the first array that is ABCD. Okay. So let me create this array within quotes I am providing each of the strings A, B, then C, then D. Okay. So we have four elements in the array and using this information that is using this input array other than this we don't have any other details. So using this what all other information we can retrieve is we can get the length of this array using length uh, function. Okay. So let me drag a set variable activity to get the length of this uh, array. Okay. So let me give the name of this activity as, uh, as length of array and let me create a variable with the same name as well. Okay. Let me minimize this for better clarity and uh, here we don't have any uh, integer type so let it be string and let's see if we are able to get the length of the array using length function or not okay so we have length function here which returns the number of elements of an array or string so if you can see the example if we provide length of abc that is a string uh, it will return us three similarly it can be used in uh, finding the number of elements of an array okay so let me use this length function and inside this length we are going to use this input array okay and length function will always return an integer value but since our uh, variable is defined as string so let me explicitly convert this value as a string to match the data type okay and let's see if we are getting four as the output or not because we have four elements in this array so we are expecting 4 to be coming as the output. Let's check. So here you can see 4 is coming which is the expected result. Okay. Now other than this what we can achieve is we can also get the index of each of the uh, elements here. Okay. So for that let me drag another set variable activity and here uh, we need to get the range of index. Okay. So I'm going to name this activity is as range of index and let me create variable with the same name <coughs> and let me give array as the data type here for the range of integer and in, in the settings let me select this uh, variable and in the value let me find for a function called range function okay so what this function does is it generates an array of integer starting from a certain number and we need to define the length of the returned array. So if you see the example if we give range of 3 comma 4 it will return us an array starting from 3 and up to 4 elements. Okay. So you can see output is 3 comma 4 comma 5 comma 6. Okay. Basically in the range function we need to give two parameters out of which the first parameter is nothing but the starting element of the output okay so this value will return 0 as the first element and the second argument depicts how many number of elements you want in the output array okay so we want four uh, numbers or four elements in this array so it will give 0 comma 1 comma 2 comma 3 okay that's it because we want four elements similarly if we give range of 3 comma 4 then the starting value of the output array will be 3 and it will generate four elements in the output array which means 3 4 5 6 
because we are specifying four as the number of elements to be returned in the output array okay so in our example we need to provide range of 0 comma until this length of array okay so in our case length of array is 4 so it will give us the output as 0 comma 1 comma 2 comma 3 okay so let's try to achieve this so let me give range function here okay and we need starting position as 0 okay and up to how many numbers we want we want until the length of this array okay so let me give length of this parameter and let's try to run this pipeline to get uh, length of the array as well as range of index okay so let's wait for the execution to be completed yeah so the execution is completed we already know that the length of array is 4 and if we see the output of range you can see it is giving us the value as 0 1 2 3 so we are getting the index of each of the elements of the array so what we can do now is we have input array as a b c d okay and we already got the length of the array as 4 and we also have the range of index as 0 1 2 3 okay so in the input if you see we have in the 0 position we have a and in the first position we have b in the second position we have c and in the third position we have d okay and our motto is to get the array in the reversed manner so basically we want the indexes to be called in reverse order okay so what we will do is we will use for each activity in ADF to iterate through each of these items in the range of index okay so in this array for the first iteration we will get 0 as the item okay so inside this for each we will use append variable okay so we have an activity called append variable activity so what it does is it will try to create a variable by appending each of the values for each of the iterations okay so in the first iteration we have item as 0 and we already have length as 4 so with the help of this item value and the length we need to derive the last position element at first okay so basically using 0 and 4 we need to get 3 first okay so if we subtract 0 from 4 it will give us 4 right so we need to add 1 here so that we will get 3 okay so in the first iteration we will get 3 as the value of the index which will give us d okay which is the uh, first element of the output array similarly in the second iteration we will have i value as 1 and length is again 4 so this time we will get 4 minus 1 plus 1 okay that means 4 minus 2 that is 2 okay which is nothing but this element that is c okay so we, we are going to get the second element in the output array similarly in the next iteration i value is 2 and length is fixed that is 4 so in this iteration we will get 4 minus 2 plus 1 which is 4 minus 3 which is 1 okay so in this iteration we will get first position element that is b okay so we are going to derive this element also that is b and in the last iteration i value will be 3 right so in this uh, iteration we will get the index value as 4 minus 3 plus 1 that is 4 minus 4 that is 0 okay and we are going to get this value that is a at the end okay so this is how we are going to formulate our expression if we clearly observe our formula will be length minus item that is nothing but iteration okay plus 1 okay so we will have length minus item plus 1 okay so let's try to achieve this using ADF pipeline so let me go to ADF portal and here we already have range of index using which we will iterate inside for each okay so let me drag a for each activity and let me connect this range of index and let me uh, connect these two set variables we don't exactly need the length of array anyways but uh, let, let's have it in the pipeline and we are going to iterate through the output of range of index right so let me use this as the item 
so our range of index variable i'm going to choose it for the iteration and let me make it sequential so that it will take each of the indexes one by one and not in parallel okay and now inside for each we will use append variable activity as we discussed so that we, we are going to append each of the uh, items of the array one by one in the reverse order okay so let me create a variable for this so let me create the new variable and give it as output array and let me provide the data type as array okay and we are going to use the same output array here and to get the output array we need to use this formula on top of input array right so we need to use this formula here okay so we will give input array and then inside bracket we are going to use this formula okay okay so let me go back and here let me first select this input array and after that we will use this two brackets and inside this we are going to have this formula that is length minus item plus one okay so here let me make use of length function on top of this input array parameter let me copy this and let me paste it here and we need to subtract uh, item plus one from this length okay so let me uh, just write down here minus item plus one okay for now i'm just writing it down and in 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 place of this item i'm going to use this item from this for each okay and in place of plus one let me use add function so i'm going to add one here on top of item okay and similarly in place of subtract i'm going to use sub function here okay so we need to subtract this value from length of uh, the input array so this is our expression for this formula and why we are using this two brackets is when you represent an item of array you always use array of zero or array of one basically you you need to use brackets to represent the index right so we are going to find the index by using this brackets on top of this input array okay so in the first iteration it will call uh, 4 minus 0 plus 1 that is third element that is nothing but the last element of the array okay similarly in second iteration it will fetch out c and then th in third iteration it will fetch out b and then at the last iteration it will fetch out a okay and it will try to append using this append variable so let's try to debug till this point and let's see we are going to get the expected output or not so you can see it has done the first iteration and we are getting d as the output let's wait so the pipeline execution is finished so in the first uh, place we got d and in the second iteration we got c then we got b and then at last we got a okay so we are good let's try to create another variable in order to hold the value in this uh, append variable okay so let me use set variable here outside the for each and let me connect these two activities and let me name it as final array okay and let me copy this let me create a variable with this name and let me make it array data type and here let me just call this uh, output array okay and let me try to debug so let's wait so now in the final array you can see we are getting the desired output that is dcba which is the reversed value of this input array okay similarly if we give 1 2 3 4 5 as the input let's try to debug and let me give 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 and let me hit on ok and let's see if it gives us 5 4 3 2 1 or not okay so in the first iteration it is giving 5 as the value let's wait and in the final array let's see so you can see 5 4 3 2 1 
which is nothing but the expected output okay so we are able to achieve this requirement of reversing an array with the help of set variable for each activity and append variable okay so that's it for this video guys i hope you like the content please hit on like button and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet thank you